Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, when you put your mic back, that's what I'm going to do. When you put your mic back, that's what I'm going to do. Oh, I see. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Now be the
and I got some hair there. I'll, tell, I'll share a story about that. They're really funny how they uh, presented that hair. So you're more than welcome to look at it. Um, I put it in the glass because uh, my co-worker at work there told me, oh, you should put it in the glass. And I go, yeah. And so I did. And, um, but I'll share that later, how that came. <laughs> Claire, this is the designer. Give a 
And I said, okay, and I was thinking about this other man from DC that I follow on YouTube as well, and then I messaged him, and he couldn't make it. And I'm like, well, who is he then? And then, <laughs> bam, right there, Jim Gin was right there in, in, the, in my news feed, and I saw the work that he was doing, and I said, well, he's the one. He's the one I gotta call. <laughs> so I did call him. He messaged me back right away. I said, I'm looking for a speaker for this conference, and um, you know, based on your experiences here, that he has the experience he needs. So let's welcome him again. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Gin Supercus. Um, I come from uh, Merritt, British Columbia, and Supernatural, British Columbia. It's a place that Logical pines, uh, forests that you can walk through the trees, rounded hills, a lot of uh, cow farms, there's, there's uh, dairy, there's basically ranching. It's a beautiful spot. It is semi arid. I, I am a father, I am a grandfather, and uh, my, my history with uh, the connection with the native people, or the, my spouse, of 40, 40 some odd years, is free from the Pepecasus Reserve, and my uh, my son is also status, uh, status Indian, and my grandson is more three quarters Indian. Okay, from the uh, from the uh, Thompson uh, Valley people. Okay, they are uh, part of the interior interior Salish community or, or area. Okay, there's a coast Salish is west coast, there, and our our area in Merritt, British Columbia, is the interior Salish people. So they speak a uh, language are people are in the caption. I don't know if I prop properly pronounce that, but uh, that's where I'm at. And um, I, I, why, I, why we came to America recently was I went on a, I used to live in Vancouver and I worked as an artist there. I, I'm an artist, uh, I practice in the metaphysical realm and in genre and painting. Um, the reason why is that uh, energies that I found while climbing mountains around uh, Merit uh, helped help me to see I wanted to paint energy, and I hope I'm starting to begin to get there with energy. So how important. I'm influenced uh, by the mountains and what happened to me. I, I, and it comes with a story. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank thank uh, Judy for having me here. And this is I actually come. From, I'm Lithuanian uh, in culture. I come from. I was born in St. Catharines, Ontario. So I, I I am from this area, and I'm used to the Nishnabi way of life, the Mohawk people. I've been to a lot of ceremonies here, uh, you know, powwows and, and polite. Um, I'd, I'd like to honor the Anishinaabe people here, the Mississauga, the Chippewa, the Henderson, I don't know how to say that, and the Wendat people here for having me. Okay, well, okay. Um, okay. How, how are Sasquatch people came to me? I, I really didn't call in for this one. I, as a matter of fact, I, I'm so uh, enraptured by the, the things that are happening now. I don't really know how to cope with it mentally because I want to save my brain. And many times I thought I was going mad up there in the mountains. So I just like to run the hell it's okay. So mine was, um, uh, I, I, for, for 17 years, I, I, when I first lived there, I, start, I, I just like to exercise, so I don't mean, like to exercise in the hills and forests, right? So I, I just took it as runs, you know, hikes, right? And, and I did it for a sweat, okay? And it helped. What happened to me is one July day or June day, I was running, it was a hot June day, and I was running up the crest, I was running up the trails, and running up the crest of the hill, and at the top of the crest, I was sweating uh, profusely. And uh, you know, really tired, and came up to the crest, and there was a mother there, okay, running up, meeting me. Uh, I didn't have time to react. I was like, oh, oh, right, like this, and stood up, and uh, it turned around, bounced. I was in shock. I saw it's uh, two of us run down, run down the hill. It went down the hill to the hop, uh, and, and started charging me again. So here it comes, and I thought. This is going to really hurt. You know, it's going to be very painful. Oh, we're going to go. I don't know. You don't see your life flashing before the eyes. I just went to protect my arm. I thought, 
it's gonna hurt, so her eyes coming to me and her claws bouncing up towards me. And I was on a, I was on a slope, so she was coming up, and I, I, I was ready to stop it in the eye, right? You know, defend myself. So I was getting ready, and then it stopped, and it bounced around, and uh, hold it down like It went down about 50, 50 yards down, and I thought, oh, I'm climbing up the crest, and I hit that on the line, <laughs> and I just started going back. Then it turned around and bolted all the way up, and it's time I had time. So I uh, picked up a rock, and I whipped it, I waited till it was close, and I, I whipped it at his left eye. And it finds out uh, mom's left eye, and it bolted down the hill. So I ran down the hill, screaming. <laughs> <laughs> that, that uh, you know, I was alive and, and made it home safely. Okay. And uh, after that, I did go up the hills. I had PTSD. I was a mess. I, I called my aunt. I called my spouse at the time and said, you know what happened? I did just so I thought it was attacked. I thought I was going to die three times. And that's what it felt like. So, uh, PTSD. I, wanted, I, I was still running. For two years, I didn't go up the mountain um, because I was afraid, basically. And, uh, it really sucked. Uh, <laughs> but uh, my, I almost saw this running down, uh, it was in November, and I would like, run down the two tracks, you know, down below the hills, you know, jogging, and saying, I miss the mountains, you know, I miss the forest. I want to be up there. And, and I was reflecting on that where I basically stumbled over. A human track that was in in the frozen uh, dirt dirt track in the mud, and it was a footprint, uh, and I, I saw it as a Sasquatch footprint. Uh, it was about it was a jewel uh, that I know now was about 15 inches by about six. In the frozen there in the mud, I stopped. That's that's a Sasquatch. It's got to be because I studied in an indigenous college there, and I was aware that these things were real. We didn't spoke with them, but I didn't, you yeah, know, I just thought, okay, like I was hooked, right? I said, you know, I was interested, it caught my attention. And uh, the, the days that I ran out there, I started going slowly up, following uh, signs like uh, leans or little uh, lean branches that uh, were, were against the trees and there'd be more going up the valley. And I followed them. One day there was about 15 leans uh, going up the valley, and I followed them all the way. I followed them up with, uh, to a structure, okay, my first structure. I, I had a camera with me and I, I, I recorded all this stuff. Uh, through that summer, I was climbing higher and higher up the mountain. And uh, lo and behold, one day I found myself at the top of the ridge line and, and tired. And it took me about two hours and it was a really steep climb to point towards the top. And I thought, you pop. I made it, you know, I'm, I'm here, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm here, and I, you know, I'm not afraid anymore. <laughs> so I said, you know, you know, it was a big moment for me, so I thought I had conquered my fear of uh, the bear, right, by doing this. Uh, I, I turned around, I, I went, started going down the hill, I was really tired, about 50 yards down, I'm, you know, maneuvering is about 75 degree pitch down. Quite steep. Uh, I heard something behind me. It was to my left up of the ridge, and it sounded like a darn baby elephant scream. Like what? <laughs> like this, and, and like what? The? Not now, not now. So I started sliding on my bum, right down the hill, and panicked and went down and sliding on my ass, you know. And I thought, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break my ankle. What am I doing? You know, they're gonna find me here. And they're gonna so I surrendered, and that was it. I was done, you know, and we'll move on from there. Okay, well, that's how I met And uh, here you go. And where do I put this? Okay, and now I'm going to show you. Uh, it's not a timeline from that moment. It is uh, what's happening now. I, I, I have, this is only a fraction of what is happening now. Okay, and, and to me, they they come, okay. I was following them for five years, okay, oh, oh yeah, tell us. following them up for five years, I saw tracks, I saw evidence, all kinds of evidence, I recorded it, those are on my YouTube videos, um, uh, 
Uh, for three years, I had uh, four areas. I taught, uh, one that was a high group, uh, one was the uh, home group, which was on my mountain. Those were my closest, uh, you know, findings. Uh, there was uh, there is an urban group that I stumbled on, which is bizarre. You'll see that here uh, on this uh, video. Uh, and I had the north group and uh, uh, the uh, another group. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Shuswap group. We went into the Shuswap and I saw evidence. But I only visited through this time uh, uh, four, four, four areas. My home group, north group, the lake group, or, and uh, the high creek group, right? Which was evidence of structures in each one. So I, I rotate it and go up one. These were always a climb for me. I always put down tobacco because I knew, I knew the protocol of uh, of uh, putting down the tobacco before I would go into their area. It wasn't about that, it was about, for me, uh, for me it was all about exercise. You know, I get a workout climbing up the hill, right? And then I could look for sign coming down and go into the bush properly, okay? So mine was more like a pilgrimage, right? <laughs> Every time, it was a sweat, it was praying. I pray for my family, you know? I pray for my close ones. It was, you know, it was just prayer, I wasn't praying to, to the Sasquatch people, I was praying, just praying, right? You know, like, you know, hardship and come down and, 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 and feel better because I suffered from, I, I suffer from the ADHD and, uh, you know, addiction issues, right? Uh, so I could, you know, it made me feel better and it was starting to heal me, okay? In a sense, okay? So uh, time went on, I've been doing it for it's about three years and I still had doubts of, uh, the Sasquatch's existence, although I had facts, I had vocals, I had everything happen to me. I had miracles happen to me, but I didn't understand what was happening. I thought it was going bad. Until one day, uh, the North group, I was, I was up the logging road by myself, always, no weapons, no nothing. Sometimes in my PJs, you know, to, to be doing this, because it was starting to feel really comfortable, right? I got uh, used to it. I, I, I started becoming happier there, like more happier than I was at home, to be out in, out in the woods. So I went to some very scary places, however, one time, it was September, it's Labor Day, Labor Day Sunday, it's a nice June day, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, I was up um, in the North Group, and uh, I was up in the highlands where uh, the clouds were, you could see the clouds directly in front of you, you're that high, okay? And I was in some, uh, I was on a logging road, I had just taken a picture of a truck, and uh, I turned around, walked in. I thought I saw something off, off the logging road. I thought it was a little teepee structure, so I went in to look at it. And, uh, I went to it, it wasn't there. You know, the thing that I saw wasn't there. So I walked in, and uh, I'm standing there, you know, my camera down, uh, looking at stuff, and I think they're having a good laugh at me at this time because they finally introduced themselves to me. I, I heard this pebble, like I'm looking down, it's pebble pings but a yard in front of me. And I'm looking out of the trees, like nuts, you know, it's like a forest gump thing. Nuts, you know, what's happening here, you know? And another one, going, you know, goes off, this, goes off the ground cover, like a yard, okay? 15 seconds later, another ping, another pebble. I'm going, okay, I'm by myself. <laughs> and I say, I'm talking to, I, say, I started thinking, I know who it is, or is this a bunch of people who are started? I said, I know who you are, right? And I, please don't hit me because I, I, please don't hit me in the eyes. That would really hurt. Uh, please don't hit me in the forehead. That might hurt too. And I said, I need my eyes. I slowly started crouching down, right, to the forest floor. I say, you know, please. And then another one uh, comes in, okay, hits, and I'm down on the ground and I'm processing, right? I'm there alone, way up high. It's daytime and then there's reality happening. There's something invisible and you can't see it. You know, throwing pebbles. <laughs> you know? Another one drops. And I'm starting to process it. And my mind couldn't handle it. Okay, I was becoming afraid. Then the last one hits me, it pings right off a, a, a small sapling behind me and goes uh, zipping past my eyes. I bolted. Okay, I'm gone, right? I'm afraid. I'm done. Uh, I bolted to the, uh, to the roadway. The logging road, but I thought, you know, I'm standing at the logging road, and I'm, I'm bringing up my cell phone, and 
I guess Mike could attest to this, it doesn't work, of course, right? It's like, not gonna work, right? Uh, but I hear it now, but it's really not. Very bad. You know? I wasn't, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. And so, through time, uh, I had an event happen to me. I, I only, I, I knew I was afraid to see them because I, frankly, I would go into shock uh, myself. I was afraid. I, I wasn't as afraid as you. I, you know, I, I went through some stuff and I said, uh, after one incident, I won't tell you about it because it's too long. Uh, we went, to, uh, they took my cell phone. They took all my electronics out of my backpack one time. Seven days later, I found them at uh, where I started. I've been looking for them and there they were, you know, uh, a yard apart and, and going to a tree up the tree. The cell phone was at the bottom of the tree, still worked, they brought it back, okay, and, I, and right there I passed them. I just really like your art, right? I'm an artist. I really like your creativity and, and, and that's the truth. I, I like what you've been making, you know, and I, I thought I'm only interested in that and I said please don't reveal yourself to me because frankly I can't take it. I can't take the shock of seeing you. You know, you really jar me. I mean, I'm also a guy, right? And I don't, I, I can't come with it. So, so I, I, I heard, I heard them say, yeah, okay, right? You could, I said it's okay, you know, if I take pictures, you're off. That's all I'm after, right? <laughs> you know, because I told it, nice, you know? So that's, uh, that's our, our way together until this, until this time, okay? So for years, until what's happening now, and we're gonna, Play it, I guess now. Uh, I'm going to show you some visuals. Uh, it, it is only from two areas. It is the urban group. And uh, feel free to dance. It's all good. That's good.
right now, uh, two weeks ago, they came down to Starbucks. <laughs> they followed me with arrows. They, they bring arrows and I'm not going to down my usual traditional road. They pointed me, they took me by, by stone and, you know, they sink to the backyard, a uh, uh, backyard parking lot of Starbucks. Uh, on that, on that, in the back there, behind the dumpsters, is this long, fellow concrete slab that's angled. There they, they started gifting. Uh, they gifted me watch, a watch, money, and they started doing murals, okay? I don't know if I have murals here uh, on, on this uh, video, but that's what they're doing. In behind Starbucks, so the people are stopping for their coffee, and they're looking at me, right? And they saw them chasing me. Those are really cool murals, right? And I said, yeah, I don't, I don't see any, you know? But they're, they're continuously doing that, right? I'll see you in the video. I'll see you in the video. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, just, just keep on playing. Um, yeah, it's all good. Perfect. Thank you. So, um, this is happening now. It's way beyond that. Another, another thoughts uh, or areas of the Oh, good. Okay, um, this is the uh, this is the urban group. We're going to start from the back, of, uh, going backwards here. Can you see this structure? It's massive. You know, but this is right below a playground in in the park that people visit. It's called MacArthur Park. Okay, and outside of town. And this is what the building is. You can see the trails. Nobody cares. Nobody sees it, right? But it's there. Okay, and the Sasquatch spent two years uh, moving across this park to get to this place. These structures in here have changed uh, maybe five to six times moving around the tree, okay? In different, in different sizes. This one's huge, you know? Huge and cool build. There's it. See how close everything is? The walkways, they're doing it right under your nose, right? And they have it. The rocks that are, are common, they're, they're family stone, you know, they're, they're always, always, always there. Um, see, see how different it is? So this is the final, like, the, the, the time that I finished, okay, uh, filming the area, because I couldn't get up to visit my son, was, was this one, okay? But they, they had come through the, the willow, the, the dry willow ponds, okay, and come up and made structures, okay, through the willows. I left it there, uh, thinking, I don't know if I, I deserve this gift, uh, I left it there for night. It disappeared one day and I came back the next day and I took it, right? Well, 
they're coming to me down my hill. I you know, like, you know, I spent years coming there and I, and I started climbing up the hill again to get my workout right and there's nothing up there. But when I come down, it's all there. There's something new in this little area. This little area, oh, uh, the Camelot Group. First time I found it, uh, you're gonna see some juvenile tracks in here. And this is uh, the first time I saw that Sasquatch uh, could dance, okay? Like that they, they do this little hop on their right foot, okay? And then through time, I've seen this over and over again. Uh, Seven o'clock in the morning, uh, kids were just in school like me, right here. I watch. I had a feeling, right? Uh, these are uh, juvenile tracks. Uh, but you'll notice that there's your yeah, right foot, right foot, right foot, right foot, to the left. And then they disappear. So there's no tracks. You have going in, no, no going out. So, so I'm trying to follow them up here. Right? And there's, oh, here's the hop. You see how those break? Right, 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 right. So, I was afraid that morning, but you know, I thought they were right there, they were so fresh, right? Uh, 
different uh, material, a different way of doing things, and there they are, the stones in the front, right? The family stones, right? You know, the other area, the other group, right? Uh, now there's uh, one across this way, but I was really happily pleased to see that because it's right out in the middle. They, they weren't meant to build uh, structures, they were into their stone, 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 you know, all over. And they were, they, they, this, is, this group is like happy to go to, they do the beach, okay? they, they hang at the beach, they're surfers, right? <laughs> So I asked for this, and I'm going to claim it because they gave it. I asked for it, you know, about six months later. But uh, you know, I said, "Show me one. Could you please show me one?" And they did, right? Also, they, they, they had taken, uh, I don't, 
I'd love to. Uh, Nerf, 
Nerf, uh, Nerf gun he used to take his arsenal up there you know Nerf guns Nerf bullets you know, we're, we're with them uh, last week they brought after three years the Sasquatch people brought his Nerf bullets set them on a tri like in a triangle and stood them up and put them in, at, uh, at our home and, and after three years so I brought them up to Jackson they brought them back after three years oh good right so he did a little ceremony put down tobacco uh, this is okay. This is Raven. I mean, we're going to do a comparison. This is from Idaho. This is from Raven Hawks. Uh, uh, it's just going to take you a walk through the woods, okay? And you, maybe you can look at the uh, comparisons, okay? And, uh, and the uh, signs like X's, Y's. Uh, these are all lifted, okay? They're, most of them are in the air, okay? This is from North Idaho, just on the Canadian border. Uh, yeah, just down, down under BC, okay? Right at the border. There's going to be some photos of Sasquatch coming up. So. Here's some photos of Sasquatch. These are her people. 
got another life, but the, you see they'll come, they, they come in the same shape, but they're all the same plus. Okay? They're forever changing this dimension. I guess the three dimensions, I don't know. There's one there. See, look at it. See that sparkling eye? Yeah. Okay, there's just one more and we're going to close, okay? But, uh, and this, yeah, cool. Okay, new entity. Uh, in cement, this is the new arrivals. These are entities with rough and suspects below. This is in print. Uh, they actually bore this into a sidewalk. Okay, up above me, about a block, okay? From the, they're right, we're right against the mountain. I, this is a new one, I call it the bird in here. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. Yeah, again, our camper, I call that one, right? And they, they 
gift. The next day, they came and they decorated it. It was called by Chopra and Letters. It was a little, little tough. Okay, here's, here's an example. This is me, a portrait of me. This is a behind Starbucks, okay? That's the hill below. You probably can't see that. That's my cat on the end of my roofs. Okay? Little Yeti is on the end. I, I pretend that I'm a witch, right? <laughs> Flying up to the mountain. And that's me, and it, they line my wings with stone and on top, right? I'm like a creature that flies. Yeah, they made this. This is the one up there on uh, many, uh, many Starbucks. They draw the mountains they've been drawing from my home with the idea of the dog now. Oh, boy. 
Pardon me? Oh, what's this? Yeah. No, I mean... Um, the tree? No, um, the tree. It had a chance of what, what it was doing was it was out of a tree, a, a large cedar tree in the night, and we had, it had its phosphorus, phosphorus uh, uh, color, radiating it from it, and it, and it came out from it. The feeling I had was like super happy and joy and vibration of the right? So, yeah. Oh, that was huge. It was awesome. Maybe 15 feet tall. Like that idea that in the dream. My son, like my grandson was always with me. He was like, this is how I was looking at it in the dream. And he was to my left, you know. Uh, we were at a gate in the uh, in the forest and, and this came to me like it, I saw it and I experienced it there. Like that's a vibration thing. It's an emanating of vibrations and coming, uh, coming out of the tree.
Yes. Yeah. But where's my hair? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
They are here. We're not here but to prove him that he exists. We're not here to say that he's real or to fix whatever. No, we're here just to share our experiences and our encounters, our connection with um, the past five people, the spiritual beings. So with this one, this art piece here is a ceremony I was doing, uh, a pipe ceremony. And, um, and he was about 30 feet away from me, and he was going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I told him, I see you, you can't hide me, you can't hide from me, I can see you. And I had my pipe, and um, I, I told him, okay, I'm not going to look at you. And so I raised my pipe, and I asked him, come pray, pray with me if you want. But instead he moved into a bushier area, and I'll show you where he sits there after. But he, uh, so I lit up my pipe, we had a pipe ceremony, and uh, we prayed together. And then what came from that is like, um, they asked for a pipe. So my friend Tammy here, she made a pipe for them, and a big rattle. <laughs> she made a really big rattle for them. And uh, Monday, my friend and I, my friend Jennifer, I hope you're watching, um, he went to do a pipe ceremony. And uh, they came, I told them we're going to do a gifting of the pipe in the, in the battle for them. And so we uh, did the pipe ceremony, then uh, I put their pipe in the battle there where he sits. Um, and then um, after our pipe ceremony, we could hear that battle going. And I told her they really like the gifts. They really love them. So this is the, the encounter I had. This lasted for about 15 minutes. And I asked for them, um, I want to meet your uh, clan mother. And uh, so one by one they, they were coming in. And they were coming in and, uh, and the grandmother. So I asked to meet the clan mother. Here 
that he's like saying, um, they peek around the birch tree and they like, oh, she's here. She's here. Get ready. We do the ceremony because they know I'm going to be doing a pipe ceremony. And that's why they ask for a pipe. So when they do, when they do a pipe ceremony, they'll come and um, join me or whoever I'm with. And, and they have encounters too. They see them. The people I'm, I bring down there. I brought my friend, uh, Erzan, the former air friend chief, and she saw one too, and uh, she wasn't too sure that was the young one, Pimpolo, and then I go, yeah, he came by because we were doing a sacred fire. And, um, and uh, I go, I told her about my friends, and she asked me, let's go do a sacred fire, and I go, I know the place, and, and I told her about them, and she said, okay, let's go, and then they came by, and, um, and came by, and he just, he just popped up real fast, and to, to let him be known that they were there to her. Because sometimes when people don't believe, they have to see it, and I think for her, it was like, I think I went after them. And I know some people, they have to see it to believe it. And I don't mind that, my son's like that too, my oldest son. So this is uh, the Gamusha, I was calling him the, the elder at first. He didn't like being called an elder. Because if you know about the elder and um, it's all colonization, so he wanted to call me Lucian. He told me, um, call me Lucian. So I said, okay, I'll call you Lucian. So I call him Lucian right now. Him and uh, a couple of it comes and uh, they're mostly together. <laughs> and he, the way he looks at him, like, it's <laughs> mysterious and he's looking down and I'm like, you did not just do that. <laughs> He's like, whoops. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it's really funny to see them. Uh, they do, they do um, awesome things. I, I also want to introduce um, Deb here from Bigfoot Canada. I met her a couple months ago. She was one of the first women that I went down there to um, introduce them to her. And, um, and just a beautiful thing happened up there. She asked a question. Well, something about interdimensional eh? how they do it. So when we were about to do the pipe ceremony, first we saw a vulture, and I explained those other fingers. They were coming to help you clean whatever you need to be clean. And then, um, then we were about to do the pipe ceremony, and the eagle just out of nowhere, just right there out of nowhere. And I was like, oh, and then she turns around and we're like, there's your answer. This is how they do it. They're interdimensional. They can go in and out in both the spiritual and the physical world. So, this one here, he's the leader. He's uh, really big. He's probably about 12 feet tall. I'll show you the site. I painted the site where I, to, I, uh, I uh, interact with them. And uh, his, his energy is really, really strong. And um, I, I, I don't remember all the messages, but they give me the messages of what to do that day or what needs to be done. And visions or dreams.
they go together because that's the landscape of where I do the ceremony. So um, here where um, my sister and I, we, we, we hung these flags there because that uh, was one of the directors that we got to hang those flags to uh, honor the, the orange flag there and the four colors. Of course, to honor the two fifteen children, and there's the red willow there, and there's one here behind here too. He sits there too, and this is his main spot where he sits right in front of me when I straight in front of me when I do the pipe ceremony, and I always do um, sacred fires too during the pipe ceremony when it's when it's okay when it's not snowing or too cold, and these are the birch trees here where they go, and on the other side here. Is where they they go so fast they can go from that tree to this tree together both of them and the the motion and the and the tackle of it there they, they 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 just go I I don't see them they just like one to there one to there so that's where this is the where I go I'm gonna let you know is is the Ottawa River near Ottawa. I can say when it's right in the city, they're all along my green belt there. And um, I'm not afraid to tell them their location because they just know who's going to come, who's going to go. They just know who to show themselves to and things like that. Because we also have experience with our campsite and all that. And uh, yeah, so that's um, the three. The grandmother, the grandmother, the ocean, and the uh, pepper of the dark. And, um, the Autumn River, there's some signs of them. They have like broken tree branches and all that. So yeah, thank you, girl. <laughs> this one here, um, my sister and I went down there on our river one time and uh, we saw a whole bunch of trucks. And a whole bunch of, and the hand print and the mud. And, I, um, and then I, I, and I asked them, they were just enjoying the view. Enjoying the view and um, sitting there. And then my granddaughter says, Go come, that's you. And I looked, I go, Yeah, it does look like me. <laughs> so, you know, it's because they know I come there all the time and I um, and I, I just watch their, see their trucks and I can see like a movie what they're doing. They even, I asked them, um, one time I said, it was around the fall, like I said, or the spring, and I said, well, please have a blank when we hunt geese. Because the reason why I said that, because I was seeing feathers, like just the feathers in the, like as if they got shredded out, like just pulled off from the bird. And then I was like, okay, please have a blank, and then these guys have a blank too. And then sure enough, they showed me their blind. It was like a big rock and grass and all that. Trucks going in and out, and they were hunting the geese. But now the geese got smart, and they hardly they hardly go there anymore because I never seen uh, signs of the geese there where they were hunting there. This one here, I call him the shapeshifter. Deer. I, I painted the deer like that because my sister said she saw the deer 
deer like that. I didn't see the deer like that. I only saw the deer as my kid, my kid butt there, and I go, well, I'm not painting that. <laughs> I want to paint the deer. And then but my sister told me about that. Yeah, so he came in as a wolf, him, and then the deer, and he ran off. So all those are messages. And, I, and, the, and the wolf is me on one plant. And of course, my helper there, the, and then the deer, represents family, represents love, and some, some, yeah. And strength, yes. And the deer's dead, uh, So when that happened, me and my sister didn't run. We didn't, we, we just looked at each other and went, ah! And we went shooting, running right towards them because it was so, it was fun. <laughs> it was fun, and we went up right into the spot, and then she was like, this happened right here, and like, yeah, it did. And then, uh, I do have video on this, Then about 
maybe from here to the table where Mike's sitting, it's like, um, that's when the horse went this right in front of my car, and my car just stopped. Because the horse felt him. That horse just went off like the buggy and just went like this in front of me. And I just stopped right in time before that I hit that horse. So I'm not like, then I'm like giving them, like, like I go, what are you going to do? And I always hit that horse. So go, like, don't do that. Like, so I'm still learning about the teaching of this with their messages. It takes time to learn their messages too. And the time it comes, and I call that the spirit of coming.
then then I saw this and it's a mess. That's us. That's us. When you feel that, I feel like I had a I didn't tell her what it was and she just started spelling it. <laughs> what is the duty? And I told her the story. She goes, oh my god, here I was smelling it. They may smell sometimes, but sometimes they don't. But that one doesn't smell. There's no smell in it. It's just a gift from them to have. So the whole point of them coming to me for, for me to do this, to share with people about um, that they're here for us for healing. And I'm not going to let science put that for DNA testing because I already know what it is. When you make that spiritual connection and they tell you, um, um, way to communicate is either through vibration, because one time I went there by myself and um, my pant legs started shaking like this. I know they're there and I'm there like, so my pant, my, my leg and they started shaking like uncontrollable. And I'm not like going up my pipe and it's like shaking, because before that I felt the vibration come from the ground and it was shaking. And I'm there like, I'm not scared of these guys. <laughs> Do whatever you want, but I'm not scared. <laughs> <laughs> and I can hear them laughing. And then I go, come on now, it's time to get serious now. I'm going to like this pipe. So that's when I just stop. It was just like, wow. So each time I go out there, or, or uh, they always have some form of temper, they just come in and they love the gifts, they love the, the rattle that I give them and uh, time to wait for them because they ask for them. And I also asked. I asked, why do you, why do you want me to um, paint these guys? Because they want to share with these guys how they look like. And then um, one time, um, my friend Jennifer was over at my place, and I, I do these things with rods, and they like them with rods because they're really cool. And so I asked, uh, I asked them, I asked them because I, I do uh, ceremonies, I do a shake pin ceremony too, I like them. And I asked them, uh, when I did a sheet pink tent one time, I put them, they're telling me, put me here in this direction, put me here in that one, put me over here, put me in this one. So they go in their direction when I do that ceremony. So I put the pink in there, put the pink in there. So see how they use the paintings to connect in the physical? So the, it's just, I guess it's just fun for them. I don't know why they do that, but they wanted their painting in that direction, that direction. And that's why I said they put no healers, because they do come in our ceremonies to help with the healing process of that ceremony. And I don't, and I do a shake pin anytime, anywhere, any place, <laughs> even in the moving car. I want to share this about this because um, my son, like um, my youngest son, he's like um, he was going through addictions, and I picked him up one time, and he took something. I didn't know what he took, but when he came out of the house, he was just angry, like he, as if he had was drinking. I'm like, what the heck? And then he came in the car, and he was like having an episode of cocaine, fentanyl. I almost panicked. I almost did when I was crying. And I pulled myself together and go, and I could hear the voice and you know what to do. And I had my bell in the car when we do the shake pins, we have a bell. And then um, I asked, I said, do a pin. I'm like, I have to do a pin because I think he's going to die because I didn't know where the hospital was. I didn't know. I always panicked. I was crying. Then I pulled myself together because my belly started shaking when they came in. Three of them came in, right in front of them. I'm still yet to paint that. And they, and I told them, and I and I was looking around for you. <laughs> I, I even swore at them and said, take that out of him now. And what I saw, they, they just, because they had their healers too. When you call in their healers in, they'll come and help you. Anyone can do that. Just gotta be 
you know, respectful and all that stuff. And they don't care if you're high or drunk because they'll come in and they'll help you. So while that shake tent was going on in my car, there was a full moon too. So I was calling everybody in, my grandparents, my grandmothers, my everyone. And then and then that's when the GD was came in and stopped me saying Sasquatch and they were calling and um, this, they have names, you know, they have their own names. And they they have their own healing teams too, so and they have just responsibilities just as we do. And they come from their from us and from up here with the star people. Because we as First Nations people, that's where our ancestors are too, the star people. And um, with them, when they do that ceremony, I shake tent. And my bell was shaking, and then when they were done with my son, my son woke up and he was like, I need to go poop. <laughs> Pull over. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. And I pulled over, and then, and then I was in the trunk looking for the toilet paper. <laughs> and then he's like, Mom, who's that in the car? Who's that in the car? And I'm like, oh. I was thinking in my mind, that's my friend. <laughs> and then he's looking and was he was looking at me. Who is that? He goes and go. So he so I don't know. So we went back in the car and um, he fell back to sleep, but I knew he was okay, he was just resting. And my dog was still shaking and and we got in the city and it was still shaking. I'm like, okay. Okay, he's got to go now. Like, you're gonna wake him up. I didn't want to wake him up. And the bell was. I mean, as soon as we got to my place, like he was fine. He just went right to bed, and they told me he's gonna get himself help. And that's what he did. He got himself help. Went into rehab, uh, not rehab, but um, a detox. And you know, he still struggles today. And that's okay. We're here to support him. And. And um, he's, he's got stories too to tell because when he went up for a smoke and he heard like walking in the backyard and stuff because I lived by the bush by the parkway and um, then he's like, he got scared, he goes back out and goes among his friends and I just know it. <laughs> and then four o'clock, a couple of hours later, he goes back out again and he was the same thing. And he goes, yeah, those are my mom's friends. <laughs> and he went back in. And so he knows, like, he's the bearer of them. And that's why, um, you know, why I gave this conference for us, because they couldn't know he was. And he did come in in other ceremonies, too, with my niece a couple of years ago. Um, my younger sister, Jen, there, she called me and said, her daughter only has two days to live. I'm okay, got your shit kicked. I was in the uh, reserve in Quebec, she was in Ottawa, my niece was in the hospital. And that's what we call like distance healing because up here they don't have a distance. I could be on the other side of the world and still do the same ceremony and still have the healing whenever it's needed for that ceremony, for whoever comes from that ceremony. So my, my niece, when I told my sister, okay, this is what these guys gotta do, you gotta sit here because they're showing me like how, where to sit and all that. So we did the ceremony. Um, we, we had directions and then my sister went to go do them and she said, um, she's gonna be okay. And um, so the doctors, like she's still alive today, even though they gave her three, three days to live in. But my niece said that she saw, what she saw that night was black liquid coming out of the tubes that were connecting, going out, and she thought she was doing the ceremony. <laughs> She's doing that ceremony and she uh, knew, you know. One thing I learned about these ceremonies is um, that we're not responsible, like for me, I'm not responsible for the decisions what they make after, because I struggle with that. Well, we did this time on what the heck? <laughs> but people have some own free will, right? So, their own decisions, and I have to accept that even with my own kids and, and things like that. So, so that's kind of ceremony. Uh, I have another painting, and it's in my car, but this came when I was talking to Mike about uh, coming in for a conference and coming here. And I asked him, uh, when I was talking to him, there was one man that came in, like, you know, and then he, first they showed me the four colors of man, and then this one came in, and he started like, moving like this. And they're like, this one's fine. And I'm like, I'm not your last mice. Mice, right? <laughs> so I was talking to 
like in college, I wanted to go. And that message was that they work with all people. That's why they showed me the medicine. You know? They work with all nations, not just First Nations people. They come to, they see the heart of your spirit. They see your energy, they see that. And they let people like that work with them too. Let them know that they're here to help, to heal. And, uh, and I have so many encounters with them. I, it's just a norm now for me to, um, I'm not surprised anymore, but it, it is nice to see because they do go invisible. They do, um, they, they came to me like visible mode and I go, I know you're there. <laughs> you get to see the, the blurry and stuff and, and the wind and stuff like that. So they do um, amazing things along this river. Anywhere actually. So uh, when I do that, those ceremonies with them, I um, honor them, tobacco, give them. What else is there? Um, so recently, I'm going to end this with this one because I think I have a Zoom with um, James. Yeah, <laughs> at 1 p.m., so I'm going to be on track to it. And this is the last message I got. So when me and my friend Jennifer went to do a pet pet ceremony, and uh, there's litter around the area where we do the ceremony, and um, and I'm like, oh, these people, they're literally like Tim Hortons cups. I gotta say it's Tim Hortons cups, because I'm not a Tim Hortons drink coffee drinker. <laughs> so anyway, these Tim Hortons cups were there, and oh my god, these people, like, what's So I told my friend, like, well, we got to clean it up because we're doing ceremony and we got to pick it up. And so we did that. And, and, um, and that message they gave me was, he was holding Mother Earth. And he said, we're taking care of Mother Earth too. You tell him to do the same. So that's my next painting is going to be, is him holding Mother Earth because they're taking care of our earth too and we have to do the same, take care of our earth. That's the message, the last message I got for to paint. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah, that's about it. So I'm gonna go and zoom. Where's my test guy? Hey? Oh yeah, my man, yes. <laughs> So another thing about them, they, they also give me the message to paint the map. So that's Pearl Island there, because they showed me this, Pearl Island, and uh, that's the location map. So I'm going to put a plastic over it, I'm going to try to do this every year where people can put their experiences, sightings, hearings, uh, connections, and as we know, as native people, first nation people, then it's Pearl Island there, Florida. Mexico, Alaska, Newfoundland, and the terminal here. It's about the eyes, and then I connected that him with that. So that's what he showed me. So, uh, yeah, so that's uh, the latest one I did. And yeah, I, I have others. I have more paintings. <laughs> I just didn't want to bring them all. I didn't want to space them taken. That's what I want to share with you guys today about the, the paintings that I did. And um, it's just so amazing how they can come through you with your own gifts and your own talents and, and the messages that you are the conduit to, to help them to heal others. Alright, so thank you. Maybe I'll find sign in. Um, just give me a second there. I'm going to message James and um, uh, 
I'm going to log in on this panel here, this computer here. Um, so just give me a minute, okay? It's going to be a nice guest. Okay, uh, it's not me on. Sorry, I can't log on there. Like, let me um. Okay. Is he there? How come he's not showing there? I think sorry about being late.
like, sorry about that James, I was getting a drink. <laughs> so why don't you tell us about your experience uh, while you were filming uh, with uh, Barry Webster. Sure, sure. So I, I had got uh, I had got wind of Barry and his brother and the Red Splashing Research Organization a couple years ago and I uh, reached out to Barry um, and we started having conversations much like this. Like I, I interviewed him or did it via Zoom and then we had these phone conversations and what I could tell was Barry was very uh, passionate and almost angry in a way about him knowing the truth about what what Sasquatch is, you know, based off of his experience and watching all these shows on TV and seeing all these people that are, you know, running around in the woods with camera truck camera traps and knocking on trees and screaming. Uh, and it, it bothered him. And he wanted to have somebody come up and document their story, but he was very, very particular about how, right? Very, 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 very a man of faith, and that's the big part of what he believes to be what drives the interaction of leaders with him and his whole clan, the whole clan of um, people, ancient people, you know, what what they are, and they call it Kusama, and the tribal elders didn't want people messing with them. They've always worked in, in uh, they've always lived and coexisted the way they coexisted. And Barry's grandfather had interactions with them. Uh, not to the level that Barry did or does, but um, they, they recommended don't, don't lose the amount. You know, just leave it the way it is. But Barry, being Barry, is very competitive. <laughs> and he, he wanted to, to, to try to reach out. So, uh, Barry, over the years, have tried, you know, initially, he called it the white man right? Where, where you knock on trees and you look in the woods and set up camera traps. And then they just saw them and that he's a man of faith and that, you know, he, he was just going to pray and not break his intentions that way. And one of the things he started doing that, he started having these interactions with the more 
pages of the story. You know, it's not just Barry and his team. The whole reservation has uh, interactions. And, and I want to get involved with the whole community and, and, and hear their side of it and the history of it. Um, as well as, again, kind of take this community service between Barry and I to the next level and kind of somehow tie that all together. So that's in the works. You know, it'll probably be next year before I get back there again. But um, uh, I hope you enjoy, you know, enjoy this. It's different than a typical business documentary, which it should be. You know, I'm, I'm pretty honest about who I am and, and what I'm about in this, and so is Barry. You know, and, and those two will meet. Thank you, Barry. I mean, <laughs> thank you, James. Um, can you hear me? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a guest here too, her name is Debbie, and she has from the group of Bigfoot Canada. So she has a question here about, um, since then, like, have you, like, had a spiritual connection before that, or right after me, or with their you, you know, it was, I didn't have, I, I shouldn't say that, there's always been something there, but it's hard to define, and, and I can't really put it in words. But, um, you know, for me to end up doing this, I, I put my business on hold, I put my family kind of a second, and just did this. I didn't know how to make films. You know, I didn't know how to but, but something drove me to be Barry, something drove me to, to do this, and uh, I, I can't deny it. And once I was up there, uh, especially the second time, there seemed to be centered around me as far as trying to get my attention, or as Barry put it, he's like, they don't show you the whole enchilada all at once. They know your heart. So if you, you come there, they know your heart. And you get up there, and they know that look, James is trying, he's come a long way, and now he's coming back again. And his intentions are right. His heart's in the right place. And he wants us to acknowledge him. Okay, they're kind of pranksters in some ways, but we'll, we'll acknowledge him. You know, we'll give him what he wants to some degree, but they weren't ready to show themselves fully, you know. Um, and and Barry told me that before it came, that's pretty much exactly what happened. So it was, it wasn't a surprise to Barry, but it was a surprise to me, you know. And, and it, it's a feeling out process 
And there was a bunch of other camera crews in the area that I didn't know this at the time had, had invited out. And he was like, nah. And then when we came out, he said, you're, you're the guys. I want you guys to do this. You're the ones. And so uh, uh, for me, there's another guy in our, that I did this with, RPG. Um, he's in the film. He was on Finding Bigfoot as a producer. And then he was on the first season of Expedition Bigfoot. He was on the first episode and he got sick uh, when they're out there. And you see them in the first episode, he got sick and they had to replace him. But uh, you know, we partnered up with him and he's had a history of also, you know, working with indigenous uh, people. Uh, so we kind of had the same mindset on that. Um, and I don't know how else to put it, I just, I'm more interested in that part of it because I think that's the truth versus chasing people around that, you know, say they've seen it or you have a blurry picture or, you know, there's not real history yet. It's not real history yet. And yeah, the indigenous people have a real history. So that's, that's what I'm interested in. And you have people like Mike, who everybody will meet today, um, who's, for me, he's had the most profound personal interactions that, that I've ever, that I know of. That, that, and I've known Mike for a few years now, before I went to Omaha, or to the uh, Macy Reservation. Before I went there, I knew Mike, and I talked to him a few times, and then those things happen, and, and, and then talking to Mike, it correlates with the same experiences he has that are supernatural, you know. Um, and I'll, I'll end with this, you know, there's a whole fight, and you guys probably hear it too, but especially here in the States, where people in the Bigfoot community are the worst for each other. Like, like it, it's like warring tribes, right? Like, people believe it's an animal, and if you believe it's anything else, they will teach the guts. <laughs> it's good, it's good, but politics or something, it's even worse than that. And uh, I, I stay out of all that, right? I, I don't care. Like, I, like I, you'll see my film, I'm, trying, I'm not trying to be some big book researcher or scientist or skeptic. I'm just a dude that's fascinated and has been since I've been a little kid when I lived in Alaska fighting this. And I get it. I have to put myself in a position to where I'm going to go where it's going on. You know, and don't open myself up and this document happens. So, um, yeah, if anybody's got any other questions or anything, feel free, man. And if not, you know, enjoy it. Enjoy the film. Does anybody have any questions? So, has your opinion changed um, from before? Like, what, like you said you had a, like, Connections since you're a kid, you have fascination and all that. Uh, after Barry, meeting Barry and doing that documentary, like, was it more your opinion shifted or your knowledge? You know, it would confirm what I thought because when I was younger, I thought, you know what, they always use this example of the mountain gorilla that people with uh, legend in the 1800s was this big gorilla, you know, in the jungle. The, the recycled legend until they found it. And people would use that analogy and say, well, that's a single thing. You know, we the real start to see them and them. It's been going on, you know, hundreds of years. And nobody's got a body, nobody's found one. So they don't, if they, they're not going to be, like, they have abilities that a, a, a regular flesh and blood animal or person doesn't have. And I always thought that, but like, there's something else to this. And then for me, it's been more confirmed when experiencing something walking in front of me when nothing's there, when hearing grunts right next to me when nothing's there, when, you know, stuff, stuff like that, and, and feeling the presence and feeling energy and vibrating where I'm almost going to pass out right after I ask them to do something. You know, that, I can't explain that, but I said, confirm for me, in my mind, in a way that these are, you know, these are ancient beings. These are spiritual people. They're not, uh, this isn't some primary. So, if anything, my opinion has been more confirmed or I've experienced it. I guess it's always a difference, right? It's easy to be a little keyboard internet researcher, but if you're not going to go out there and put yourself 
show up or we're really going on. What do you really have to say? You know, <laughs> we'll, we'll experience it. Like you, you're, 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 you're out there, you're experiencing it. And, and uh, for people to try to knock other people like they want to do it, they have never even put boots on the ground or open themselves up to it. So uh, they just going to watch videos and scripts and shows. <laughs> Florida, have you reached out to the native uh, indigenous communities in Florida? You know, I had a, a situation, I was on Mike, Mike, I was on Mike's uh, YouTube channel um, a month back, and, and I was telling the story that right down the road from me, there's an area by the jungle, it's literally it's a state park, but it's, uh, you know, like a preserve, it's, it's hundreds of thousands of acres, and it looks like a jungle, and, a lot of sightings down there, and on the edge of it is this uh, little place, it's called the Crowley Nature Museum, and there's a lot of stuff that goes on right there as well, and I got to know the curator of the and she called me one day and said, hey look, I was putting the cows, and, you know, checking on the cows, and I have to go through this gate, open the gate, and drive the uh, little cart to the gate, and then the river runs there, so muddy that you can't even get close to the river without sinking in, but right on the edge of the bank, there's just two footprints, two bear footprints. Like, like human, they look human, but there's no trackway leading in and So she had me come check it out, she took me down and cast them. And it looked like it would be like human footprints, but almost like some human would have to be, you know, hung from a helicopter just stick his feet in the mud and get lifted back up. There's, there's no way to walk up there. There was like blueprints where they took them off and then put there. There was nothing near it. So she she found it really odd. She was finding dead animals up in the trees and, and odd stuff like that. Um, so I talked to the Seminole medicine man here before the Seminole tribe. And I can't think of the name of it right now, but he told me their name for it. And so the name translates to the lost, the lost people of war not lost, like they're lost, the ones that disappeared. And he told me stories that like, we'll find one footprint. We'll find one footprint in the mud and no track there. Like they'll let you know that they can do these things that, that we can't do. And they can, some of the you know, interdimensional ways, they can come and go as they please. And you know, we talked to Mike, and Mike, as you'll see, he's got some pretty profound experiences just like that. So, no, there. so yeah, I talked to a seminole man, a medicine man, and I talked to some uh, other, uh, uh, there's no tribe in South Dakota, and it, it, what fascinates me is, I can talk to somebody from the tribe of Oregon, Canada, down the forest, right? That triangle covers thousands and thousands of miles, but they all have the same rich illustrated in the oral history about the heritage, except for the main one. And how is that possible when they didn't have the internet or anything back then when, these, when they started to document and, and tell the stories and have the experiences and draw them and write about them? You know, why would they all have the same, uh, the exact same experiences with the same thing but never communicate with each other because you can't have a problem apart? And for me, that's more compelling than hearing about a guy sitting south across the road, and, you know. Uh, yeah, so there. She just got the way, is that? Hey, James. Can you hear me? How are you doing? Yeah. Good. Judy stepped up for a sec, so I jumped on here not to leave you hanging. Oh, I don't know why. It's good to hear you, my friend. <laughs> you too. You too. So, um, yeah, I guess we're going to watch your film soon, huh? Awesome. That, that, that's great. I, I don't know what time kind you of have that slated for, but um, yeah, enjoy. By all means, I know you and I have discussed a lot of your Goes past and be before I had made this film, had some of the experiences I had, but um, 
you know, parallels and, and just the things that would clearly be your abilities. It's hard to explain to people the energy experience and the having energy course through your body. Here in the footsteps, way the body and nothing's there. Or even in this house that we visited, we have the spirit ones because they asked us to bury the brother that can you bring that? I, I didn't want it to be a paranormal investigation, but they were the ones that said, look, there's a lot more going on here in our homeland than just that much. Uh, it's all related. You know, Barry talks about his in his tent kind of lighting up at night when they're camping and this orb's hovering over a truck and it's kind of beating into the truck and there's a photograph in that truck of some of the very compelling evidence that, that Barry and brother had. And that's all that was in that truck and that was on the truck that was like shooting a light down on that. And um, we saw that as we'll see in the, in the, uh, um, the movie. It, it, it's part of it, you know, and, and you know, a lot of it, you think, oh, could that be eye shine or the changing colors? And, uh, you know, it, it's just, there's more, this is something different, you know, there's, these are spiritual people, and uh, um, I could go on and on, you know, and I know you've got, you know, as I told Judy, the most, for me, the most compelling interaction anywhere on earth if you ask me you know so i think the people there are going for a treat for sure but um yeah we're uh, excited to to go back out there excited to go to canada and my hope is to get up there uh, like with some of you my interest in exploring where i believe this originated from is sort of interacting with the indigenous people and that's that's the, the reason some people are selected, I believe, to with the right heart and right spirit to have that interaction, be an ambassador almost, or a representation of who they would be okay with having a relationship with and far in between, I think they're one of them. But I think the indigenous people are going to be that's the roots, right? So I'm really interested in exploring that, whether it's you know, in Nebraska like you did, Canada, you know, maybe in, in Florida, Oregon, whatever, but in your case, you're there and they're there. You know, the indigenous and, and Mike Patterson, I think. That's, that's a very, very compelling um, story. And very, very much worth exploring. So we'll see what the next year will. Well, uh, you know, we're all glad to hear more and more people speaking up about this, and it's uh, really uh, giving some weight to the, the truth of all this. And people are starting to finally realize, right? Yeah, and, and, and I told uh, Judy that the biggest problem the community has is the community. <laughs> the, the, uh, you know, the warring opinions on them. You, know, you get a lot of the keyboard warriors that never set foot up in earnest anywhere. Else. And we'll, we'll say that they've got it figured out. It's a, it's a large, gigantic certificate, whatever, right? They, they've got it all figured out. I'm like, if we're talking about South Sun here, like, you know, it, it, uh, nobody's got it figured out, right? Even people that have interactions, they've got it totally figured out. And you've had zero interactions with these people, you've had zero earnest, uh, really trying to get out there. And yet you, you know for certain what it is and what it is. And it's a little like Michael coming along and put out this stuff and they just want to shoot it down because they've never seen it before. And I think that people get so upset because they want to be the ones to show it or see it or whatever. But like, it's almost like they get mad when somebody brings something forward. It's, it's, it's awesome. But it's human nature, I guess. Yeah. All you got to do is look at their feet and you tell they're human. Human types. Yeah. That's simple. You know, there's no yeah. divergence in the toe. They're not. Uh, they're not an ape per se as an animal. But. No, it, it's just belief systems are hard to break, buddy. Right? You know it. And uh, right. um, a lot of the belief systems that are built on 
the lines are, you know, most of the population is under that lash. So what do you do? Right? I, I look at it like, I'm not going to fight that battle. What I'd like to do is just uh, be a voice and actually help show, put my money where my mouth is, and show the other side. You know, and they've got compelling. You do that enough, and that's where you start, right? Uh, anything else arguing, it's just like putting your political opinion on Facebook. You're not going to change anybody's mind, and just going to get, you know, this starts, the battle starts, so it's pointless. Still waiting for Judy to step up here because I, I I have no idea where this uh, film is on the, the computer. Right? Okay, we got her back. Good to see, good to see you, right. James. Good to talk to you. Good to see you, friends. Not bad. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Good to be Okay, thank you, James. Um, does anybody have any questions for James? If we have any questions, um, uh, okay. Um, my sister asked, um, have you ever seen them go into um, a portal or into dimension? No, I, I haven't. I haven't seen that. Uh, when I was talking to Barry mm -hmm. and. Uh, his team, and, and on his team, there's some other, there's a couple white dudes, right? One of them is, he looks, he's like a little scientist, right? Really, he's got a CFD, and he's got a career in science. Um, and he said, I took him aside and I said, uh, Richard, so what's the deal, man? What do you think? He's like, James, I've been coming out here for 10 years. It's cold, it's harsh conditions. I wouldn't come out here for 10 years unless I'd seen him. They're here, I promise you. And then they told me, that they told me uh, uh, individual people told me the same story. And it was when they're out at this one spot in particular, they saw a blue, kind of a blue light kind of opening up and some fog. And, and they all kind of saw it and like, okay, what's going on? And through that came Ishami the big one, the white one, but not, he was almost like translucent. It wasn't his full body, and he walked up to Barry and put his hand out. And they had a, a, a Russian, a Russian, a famous Russian Yeti investigator with them. This guy fainted and fell off the wall. And uh, Richard told me, he said, James, at that moment, I'm a scientist, I had to rethink everything. I had to look at the metaphysical possibilities of this. I, I'm looking up and I can frame my neck back where you can see the top of his head. And he's standing there and he's not fully uh, skin and bone, it's almost like an apparition, but it's different. And he's like, I don't know how else to tell you this. But it made, it made the scientist rethink everything he was thinking at to the point about what they could be. Um, and so, but the feeling that I get there too, when we pray, like I'll pray with her and sit there and be quiet, often you just feel the vibration start. And uh, it's, it's a special place and it's a special relationship. So I've done And we were limited. We had a smaller group, like Barry said, when we come out this, this time, we only have a couple of cameras. So we didn't have all the high quality gear. You didn't have the high quality. I don't care. We're, we're going to do it your way. And so, you know, you guys will feel see, you can enjoy it, and, um, uh, you know, there'll be more to come, there'll be more to come, and including, including the Cree people up there, and, and Mike, you, you watch, you know, uh, very compelling to get, to get your, not see your story, but experience as well, uh, with you as well. Mm -hmm. So I got one question here from the Bigfoot Canada men person. Do you have advice for us on how to maintain openness to the more spiritual side? Yes, Barry said remain, uh, express your intentions and, and express your openness and look at it as, as everything as an invitation. Please and thank you. And just a real long, it is yeah. really hard. It was so long. 
to make that connection, uh, whether it's trying to capture evidence or not. I think sometimes the fact that they kind of know you just want to get a picture or you want to get something, it's almost yeah. like pictures be damned. So, you know, I want to go on a long term relationship. How can we start this? And really just your intentions. And I've heard that before, but I think it's in your heart, the honest intention. The real so we have people from our crew that I knew that was going to happen with because they're they're half skeptical or they're going through uh, the mood, the mood, your mood that day. If you've got some heaviness in your life or some problems and you bring that tension, that seems to, to interfere almost with the communication of past. Uh, it's just really clearing everything out and opening yourself up. And it may take 10 minutes of just closing your eyes and being on your knees and offering. You know, I just want to use, and uh, you know. Uh, but again, I think I think they already kind of know that, and they kind of select who who they will be okay with, uh, you know, being seen by and, and reaching out to. Yeah, great. Okay, James, I want to thank you. Thank you, Jimmy Gretch. Um, I know we'll meet again. We'll meet once. <laughs> I know we'll meet in the future. And, yes, um, we will and do this, um, share that knowledge that you were speaking about earlier. Absolutely. I, I look forward to that. I wish it was there today, but um, this, this is good. I hope you guys enjoy the film. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, thanks, Barry. Uh, so I always want to say Barry. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah. No problem. Thank <laughs> you. 
great death up here and today the big quick camera and it's like well my week. So going to have to change these slides manually, so I'm going to have to kind of sit down and do a bit of reading here. Alright, so I've been doing this research for 15 years now, and I put together this little presentation. You know, so I was spending a lot of time in the woods first started, and I believe this is why this happened to me. So it's my interest in nature photography that I believe was the, the catalyst for my introduction to the world of Sasquatch research. Uh, years of interactions uh, later would have me reflect back to the start of my journey and help me realize that it was most, I was most likely being watched. They saw my respect and how I interacted with, with nature. Um, while, while they are fallible and do get caught up very times, I've learned that Sasquatch select humans who they wish to reveal their existence and abilities to. I'm one of those fortunate enough to have been given a rare glimpse into an expanded understanding of our true reality and the hairy folk are no limit. They're an ancient human types who hold the key to understanding consciousness and our true history. We are in the midst of a great reveal of other people. Um, this is just some of, some of my photos that I've taken over the years. Uh, while while um, I believe I was being watched by them, so these ones some of those. I'm always in the woods looking for uh, a National Geographic shot. So 
So my first encounter, um, this was uh, the next one, basically uh, in Denby, Ontario. Mm -hmm. It's not going. It's not going. Oh, in my next one. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> next, uh, Denby, Ontario, Ottawa Valley. So that would be probably familiar with that. And the next. Um, so it was in the mid-70s when my extended family had a, a spent weekend at a place called the Swiss Inn located in Denby, Ontario. It was there at the age of 10 that I would have my first Sasquatch encounter. My father dropped me off down the road at a river where I would do some fishing. When dusk set in, I started to head back to the lodge. As I was walking up the road, which had a bush on both sides, I was about 10 years old when this happened. I suddenly saw something up ahead standing right side of the road. As soon as I noticed it, the bear turned and disappeared through the tree line where it, where it had stood, and I froze in fear. Um, I then panicked and ran back to where I'd been fishing. There was a campground there with trailers and families. I walked up to a family sitting around a campfire and tried to speak. No words would come out. I was traumatized. I remember I was pale white. I can still remember this, and this is. Uh, it's over 40, 40, 45 years ago. I can, uh, I can almost still see the face of the father as I stood there. All the blood drained from my face. I was pale white. I finally managed to get the word help out and calm down enough to finally be able to tell them that I was chased by a bear. A lot of people resort to um, a bear, you know, when they see a Sasquatch, it just it doesn't register. Um, that was the story from a 10-year-old. Sorry. <laughs> it's all good. The father helped me. The father helped me. Drove me back to the lodge. On the way back, I pointed out the general location where I witnessed the bear. It's a common occurrence for people to say bear when describing a Sasquatch sighting. They're not supposed to exist, and it's typical that an encounter would have a deeply profound effect on one's psyche. After dropping me off, I walked into the front door and nearly jumped out of my skin as the owner's German Shepherd was right there. I was still pale white, but blood had to come back in my face. My family knew that I experienced something that scared the hell out of me. I ended up telling my family that I was chased by a bear. It was something that would end up getting buried and forgotten for 30 years until October 25th, 2008. That was the day my life would change forever. It was during my forest visits in 2007, spending time with a camera in the woods that I would have an epiphany. I would start looking for Sasquatch and pursue the photograph of a lifetime. That was my initial goal, something that has changed over the years as my, as my experiences grew and evolved, showing me a whole different perspective on the enigma of Sasquatch. Uh, structures and tree breaks. So when I was uh, first getting involved in this, I, I'd be out there searching for, for this sort of thing, looking for evidence, so you can scroll through some of those. Um, Structures that look man-made or something that are a uh, common occurrence found in areas that may have Sasquatch presence. Sometimes they're built right next to trails that humans tend to frequent. My own thought is they're purposely placed there to entice curiosity, to give a soft exposure to their presence. Uh, most humans will walk right past them without a second thought. Sasquatch want to connect with humans. I've documented many structures in numerous locations over the years, some of which I've had experiences showing their presence. I've witnessed changes to some structures that I keep an eye on uh, while making frequent visits to a location. Those changes would sometimes occur literally overnight as I'd be back in there at first light to see the undeniable changes uh, made to the structures uh, since the previous day. Um, these are uh, some of the ones I photographed over the years. That's uh, John Bindernagel, um, who came down to Ontario, met me uh, a bunch of years back, I can't remember the year. He's passed on, he spent over 40 years involved in the subject, um, and basically a pioneer in the field, wildlife biologist. That's an orb of a structure, something that bear witness to. And some of these are uh, local. You know, a lot of people think you have to be in the middle of nowhere, but you don't. So a friend of mine, Leanne, who, um, she's 
showing me some of these structures that I have photographed. That one was up in this area. When you see something like that, um, this is actually the top end of the city. The, the trees marked by uh, the maintenance. And, but you look at all those trees bent over, and then this one broken down, holding them all down. When I see something like that, it's, that is not natural. Same with those. I came across all those in the same area, um, a bunch of pines. You know, they got, they got a pretty big girth on them. Like, not of us could do that, could snap them off. They were the only ones, just about half a dozen snapped off and laying there right, right beside the trail. Um, go back now. Trees that are bent over like that can get uh, ice and snow build up, but if you see that one, it's got the end locked down. There's a tree laying on top of it, that's when I think there's uh, some manipulation. John again, I'm showing him right, right at the spot where I actually had my first close vocal encounter, which is you know, the top end of the city here. And it's basically a hop, skip, and jump where the vocalization happened that changed my life uh, October 25th, 2008. That's in my own backyard. Yeah. I went out there one night, and it was the only tree like that. It made no sense. You know, it wasn't a dead tree. It was Fine, basically broken and twisted a little bit, and I just found that very odd. It, it, it happened right where I, I like to record audio. I, I tend to record audio sometimes at home. And it was probably 50 feet away. Wow. Um, that's my footprint beside the Sasquatch print. His name's Nekatia, actually. Um, there's a cast from his family on the table over here. Anybody? Had a chance, you can check that out. But the ladies, you know, the ladies, yeah, not the I can see it here on the can on the on the yeah, on there, it's, here, it's like yeah, wow. blown out on the screen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just a, another perspective, it's my print on the right there, and next on the left, again, it's a uh, little blown out on the screen here. This was a single print that showed up five minutes within arrival. Um, I was still bringing my, my gear into the, into the cottage when I come back inside and there was a single footprint and there was a hand woven gift placed in my open trunk at the same time. Six inches on the width. One single print, it was perfect, and I uh, messed it up with like, too much water in the casting and I was kicking myself in the ass for that. That's a 20-inch uh, print um, from the big guy in the family. His, his footprint is actually down 21 inches, and he was photographed, it's not the clearest shot, but uh, he was photographed February uh, 2013, and he stands about 12 feet tall. 20 inch print. Some people will say, well, why isn't it deeper? It's because it's, uh, it's just a thin layer of snow, ice, and then it's gra frozen gravel and everything. If you can see, the, sorry, that's okay. Um, up in the top left there, you can see a little bit of my boot print, how I barely touch, you know, how I barely make in the uh, dent there. That, that was uh, March 20th, 2015. Uh, another angle, and there's actually, um, again, because the screen is one, I can't see it so great, but uh, there's a print right behind that from Ned, and then I think that's his father with the 20 inch print. And then on the right, that is a 17 inch print, which is actually at the very end of the right side of the table over here. Um, that was the, the, the cottage that I visited, that's the path coming out, and they basically 
placed it in a uh, nice clean patch of snow, just one, one person. They have that ability. Um, some of the smaller individuals. And uh, the one on the right, it's got actually a hand scoop beside it. And I, I learned that they were, it, it seemed they were basically in a swamp area scooping up uh, freshwater snails for food. That's the swamp area. There was, there was roughly about 200 footprints found in there from all the young. Um, there's four of them on the table there, four for the cats. And again, 
I took a shoe off, put uh, aside just to show the comparison of the size of his foot. So uh, he's been quite a character over the years. He's given me a lot of his voice, his footprints. Uh, he's, his whole family has just given so much over the years. You get to hear some of his voice too. I have a lot of vocals on it. Um, that, that print actually is uh, the second one from the left on the table. And I had given one to Les Stroud, Survivor Man Guy. So he went on um, went on television with uh, Jeff Meldrum and John Bindermano, and they were talking about Hulk's prints. So they said, which one do you want to check? And they pointed to that cast over there. I had no, no idea they were going to do this. So they laser scanned it and basically proved it was authentic. But try getting them to say it's from Sasquatch. I don't know. <laughs> Um, I use my vehicle a lot for uh, interactions. You can't really see it on the right side. There's a smaller handprint beside that. They have a lot of oil on their skin, which I've uh, you know, been witness to over the years with uh, numerous handprints and footprints on my vehicle even. I, uh, I've even left that on my vehicle and it sat for about three weeks before I finally washed it off. It just kept beating up. It was a, oh, yeah. another one from a, I think it was a separate visit. Um, I walked up a trail near the, near the cottage at one point and I came across some footprints and handprints. So that's my handprints on the left, my fist on the right, and one of the Sasquatch handprints in the, in the center. You notice the uh, short stubby fingers on that too. This is from somebody else, uh, another researcher who allowed me to use her photographs because I just wanted to show that similar thing, how they have those fat kind of stubby fingers. I think there's a, another photo on the visual one. Oh. Uh, basically, uh, you know, very similar, um, showing them for comparison to, to the own, to my own stuff that I thought. Um, I had told the property owner at one point to start taking photographs and you know, kind of look the other way. So he started, he was walking up the cottage steps during this photo and he took a shot. And I found a marble between the, the snowmobiles after, after this happened. But that is actually a hairy arm reaching over the snowmobile. I don't know if it zooms in. I think it might zoom in after the next shot. And I'll get a little better view of it, but again, the screen isn't the greatest. So. But, uh, anyways, okay, the, the mainstream narrative. My experience shows me that Sasquatch are a flesh and blood human type. There is, however, much more than meets the eye. Anyone who gets close enough to experience their presence at a level of contact to see there's much higher strangeness and intelligence that comes with their presence and activity. Ongoing encounter incidents with their species will reveal abilities that shatter our illusion of reality and delve deep into the unknown. Sasquatch are the masters of Earth energies. It's partly this reason why I believe there is a persistent effort by some to keep a lid on the facts of the matter. Science should be all over this, but no. Uh, it breaks the rules. There are some uh, serious implications with this discovery. The military and government have no control over them. Mainstream science mocks and ridicules the mere mention of a sighting. It's a bear, or it's a hoax, or a misidentification. Mainstream and social media are used to discredit and keep the masses to adhere to a certain narrative. Science is biased. Um, tens of thousands of sightings and accounts from many credible eyewitnesses. Um, it's all voices in the wind, face to nothing. Shows like finding Bigfoot or mountain monsters push a monster to the trail. It's all fear-based. 
the narrative holding on to the thought of a supposed long extinct giant ape called Gigantopithecus, which is based on a, an assumption of some teeth and uh, some partial mandible found in the market in China. Uh, with this subject, truth is strange and affliction, anyone with the right intention can make contact. It only takes a bit of knowledge and effort. I did it, and I know many others do. I don't follow the narrative, I follow my experiences and what they show me. I get it from the source, not from some TV program that still plays the do they even exist again. There's many involved in this subject who refuse to acknowledge that there's a part of all this that doesn't make any logical sense. It takes a critical thinker to do this properly, to keep an open mind regardless of how strange it can and will get if one persists. One simply needs to accept and address that we're dealing with a mystery that most humans have no experience with. Most involved in the subject have no contact experience. Anyone getting involved tends to resort to methods that are proven futile for literally decades. It's uh, like the definition of insanity, keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. You either evolve as you learn or you stay stagnant in your approach. I know some that have spent over 40 years and still deny and put up trail cams, hang bare bone chips, camera traps, etc. You might get a reaction, um, that's it, contact is where it's at. My personal involvement in this subject has brought me a very challenging path where there has been a wall of denial, much slander, harassment, stalking, hopes, accusations, and more. At one point I did have the support of John Bitternell, who was a prominent wildlife biologist involved for over four decades uh, of research on the subject of Sasquatch existence. John was a true pioneer in the field of Sasquatch research. I had the pleasure of spending a little time with John, showing him structures that were related phenomena in the area where I had my first close bolt encounter back in 2008. Another uh, supporting and well-respected science mind was Dimitri Vayanov, who was the progenitor of uh, Boris Porchman, founder of phonology. It was uh, Dimitri's goal to have phonology recognized as a new discipline of anthropology which would have the Sasquatch recognized as people. Sadly, he did not see his goal reached before his passing on May 28, 2020. I think he was, was not, uh, 90, what was in his 90s? While both John and Dimitri did support my efforts, I was asked by both men to tone it down about their abilities. Science is well aware that Sasquatch are both real and both abilities have changed our paradigm. The subject is highly controversial and my own input over the years has brought much backlash. I was told by John at one point, his exact words, you're so far ahead of the problem. Uh, Dimitri had asked me to not talk about their abilities as we had to have them recognized first. He stated that I was put in charge for the words. I politely refused on both accounts. My thought was too little, too late, I was six feet under by the time science catches up. So uh, my intention was to give it all and let it sort it after the fact. I stand by my decision and knowing that my work has helped many understand their own experiences while others have used my information to make their own contact. There's nobody else involved that has publicly shown a level of contact experience with as much supporting as evidence as what has been given to me. I see it as a gift meant to be shared about the greater good. It's about truth, not pain and evil. Orbs and high strangeness. Um, when Sasquatch's presence and ongoing contact experiences uh, with that comes much high strangeness, including orbs, other related light phenomena, EVPs, supports, manipulation of electronics, including audio recorders, cameras, video cameras, even phones, and more. They actually know how to text. It's happened to me uh, several times. I've got a hold of my phone and actually sent group text to where I had to call up my dad and say, uh, uh, sorry dad, some redneck got a hold of my phone. <laughs> So, uh, uh, excuse me for a second. My own situation has developed to even uh, having the written communication and telepathy is a periodic occurrence. I've personally witnessed an extreme amount of incidents that I tend to think most humans would say is impossible. While I've always been open to their existence, if someone had told me prior to my journey that Sasquatch could disappear in the thin air, 
for both boys inside your head loud and clear and have laughed and thought that the crack crazy. Their activity will change even the most skeptical of minds. Um, I'm far past belief, I don't even know her. So this here, I, I'd be sitting on this road by myself and I would take photo after photo after photo, one after another. Um, I might take 10, 12, 15 shots in a row. Clear, 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 nothing, no wind, dead still. And then, next slide. Um, and then I see something like that. That's actually one of the better orb shots I've got. Next one. But then sometimes this would happen. And there's no change in the weather, no wind, no anything. Suddenly, it's just from clear to filled with this. Um, that's a, an orb with a curved tail on it that the property owner managed to photograph. He didn't see it when it happened. This was seen after the fact. Um, this is an incident that happened with the property owner and myself sitting outside and I wrote it down immediately basically after it happened. So it was almost uh, like a, a, a moonlit patch in the forest about 30 to 40 feet in front of us. Uh, we were sitting in chairs just watching. It was completely overcast. Um, snow on the ground. So 30, 30 to 40 feet in front of us in the forest as we sat on the road in chairs out in front of the cottage. It was about 20 to 30 feet long, about 10 to 12 feet at the wide end, going to a point. Uh, it looked as if someone turned a light on and off for about five seconds, uh, on and off on the ground. It happened at about 4.15 a.m., completely overcast with continuous light snowfall. Nobody but us present, uh, both Wayne and I were both looking at it when it happened, so they knew that we were both looking in the same direction. It was dark, we didn't know that we were both looking in the same direction. Sort of like a light shining through a window on the fourth floor. Remember, there was no, uh, there was no sharp, defined edges on it. It was just like soft moonlight. It came on like, like a light switch and then shut off, and that was it. And no, no explanation. For it. So there's a lot of strange light phenomenon that comes with this, not just orbs. Um, imposed imagery. So when I go on location, I take a. Um, take a point shoot camera that I bought for them. But instead of trying to trick them for a photograph, I just put one on the table and they've actually given me dozens of images at this point, some that have happened. Even as I'm sitting at the table, the camera's within arm's reach and I'm periodically checking it. It hasn't left my sight and I'll get new images sometimes that's happened. I think, uh, Again, the screen's not great, but the, to me, when you look at the uh, clear, it looks like a hand over her face. Yeah, I wish they weren't so long. Um, and just go through those. That, that is actually uh, one of them with their head turned. Every hand. And these these are, you know, these show up indoors. They have that ability. That's a, a half a head. It's basically an orange eyeball on the bottom. I you know so, some people might be saying, well, how can you see that if you look at it on the computer screen? Yeah. You can really tell. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes um, they, have, they have a lot of humor, so. Some of these shots, I really question if they're even photographing something that, that's alive. I don't know what, what they are, only that they have put the images on the, the camera. But if you're going to see something like a stuffed animal or something, the, the eyes don't tend to have a, you know, that shape. Well, this is a, see, I think it's like a two second video thing just that showed up on my video camera okay we want to try that do it one more time 
There's noise in the background. It's just, uh, I think, from television. Coverage. It was just, uh, they have also imposed uh, video onto my video camera. They tend to be uh, short little clips like that. This is another one. Yeah, really hard to see. Yeah, it's much just a, a lot of hair. They tend to be uh, ambiguous and keep you guessing. Um, this is the point shoot camera that I use on location. And one visit, I had asked them, I asked the little one if I could see a handprint. And when this happened, um, the property owner was standing in the kitchen. I was just in the, the adjacent room, which is right there, it's all open. And he looks over and he makes a comment about the, seeing these prints. They had just appeared, and we rush over, we're standing at the table, and they had condensation on them. So we watched the, the prints, we watched the condensation dry up in front of our face in just a few seconds. So they had just happened. Uh, Sasquatch humor. So we're dealing with an, an intelligence that um, displays the. Uh, we're dealing with an intelligence that displays much humor. Uh, but the epitome of "don't judge a book by its cover" uh, term I, I use often. I can't be more adamant about that. It's uh, consistent and persistent. General behavior trait of their activity displayed through displayed through their people. Uh, Sasquatch or tricksters. My experiences with, with always shown uh, light-hearted humor, never any malevolence in their antics. Uh, piles of leaves in my bag of clothing or a stick placed in my drink while I turn away for just a brief moment. And egg in my boot or items that disappear or turn. Their pranks are always with humor that leaves a smile or gives a good laugh. They're happy people who have been adamant about love and happiness in their written communication. Um, yeah, I kind of really find this one about my car. Another time I come out and the, the black thing on top is actually a microphone's um, covered, covered up. So I, I tend to get a lot of audio at my, at my vehicle, especially when I do stuff like this. And I'm always asking for handprints, so, you know, sometimes they, okay, you want a handprint? Well, they basically drew one, you know, just like this size, right? Just uh, being funny. I think it was a potato covered in some cream filled in my shoe. <laughs> Okay, this is a uh, this is Chris Munch. Um, he uh, he made the, the film Letters from the Big Man. He's, he's a Hollywood film producer. He's the only guy that's been invited in ten years to come and experience this. Chris is a beautiful soul, and um, when he he got to experience quite a few things. So he asked at one point if I wanted to interview him, and while I had him on camera, a marble dropped down in between us. And it came straight down, so you know some people might say, "Ah, oh, so what are you guys through? Well, the trajectory would be like that. This marble basically comes straight down. I've actually stopped the screen and, and taken a still shot and captured the, the, the trail of it. So there's a, a, another thing where you can this one press plays. play. Yeah. yeah. So I'll just let this play for a second. Yeah. Thank you. 
Chris just got a marble, right? Right now. This just happened right now. There you go. Thank you, my friend. I 
be recording and gain some insight into the different dialects being spoken. Okay, this is where I'm going to take over here. Thank you very much. So I'm going to play some, uh, I've got a bunch of vocals here. Um, when, when Dwayne and I first started, we would run a, um, we'd run a, like a mic stand at the door and run uh, basically a, a live, a live microphone at the door so we had ears inside the cottage. And this is one of the ones, you know, while, while that's sitting outside, Play these twice, so that's now. And then it was the, the beginning of May um, 2013, that's when they really started letting us hear their voice.
he actually says, achoo, I had an uh, allergy attack that night. He, he was actually talking about roughly about five different subjects throughout that. And another page of us, all those here. take turns stepping outside throughout the night because uh, we would get vocals, right? So he'd stay inside, I'd go out, vice versa. Sometimes we both go out. So this night, uh, for, for the longest time, it was, it was only myself that they were vocalizing with like that. And then, uh, so this night, Dwayne had stepped outside. And when you're walking in the snow, sometimes, you know, your foot scuff, you don't hear what's going on. Like they'll, they'll vocalize at a certain time. They do that often, actually. Their, their timing is impeccable. You know, they, they, it's like they, they know when your foot's gonna hit the ground or something, or they, and they will um, they'll vocalize then. So he vocalized when Dwayne was out there. Dwayne didn't hear it when it happened. He, well, he, he heard it, but he was questioning himself. I remember uh, the first time um, we placed a big tree limb on top of my, my vehicle and I had audio running through there so while he was doing that he said, uh, he said, he said the word flower so I kind of laughed and so the next visit I went back and I walked up to a tree, put my hand on the tree and I had a flower in my hand so I put my hand on the tree and I said tree Help flower up, flower, and I showed him that. And, and those two words became something that he just, he would laugh his ass off, and he just loved those words. Oh, first I'll, uh, I'll put this one on. So I, I was outside, Wayne was indoors, Again, this is that night, and 
I, I'd done it, there was activity going on, um, so I went inside, I told the you know, come on inside, uh, pass out here. I put an audio recorder on the, the ledge, so Dwayne comes out, uh, lights up a cigarette, we stand there, and I'm, I'm kind of walking, just walking away, and uh, Neff vocalizes basically right there beside us. <coughs>
go to the next one. Just kind of get through these. You can't, you can't even barely see them, especially on the screen. So I've taken the shots, cropped them, put them both together. That's his, uh, his arms on, on top of the fence. His wrist is bent on. So it's, it's actually the, the smiling pick was first. And then if you look closely at the other one, which uh, I do uh, crop him even more, he's grinning. So if you look at the nodes, um, just where where his top lip area is, there's part of uh, this, this pointed part of his nose on the left one hangs below that lip, over his teeth a little bit, and then on the other shot, it's you know, way high, right? So the next shot. So you can see his grin there, what I'm talking about. So whites in his ear, uh, I believe, uh, is from oil and light reflection from the flash. And then I get a full on smile there. So so the other shot, if, if you look at that ear there, if you can only see the one, and you go to that one, that same ear is white. Now go to the other one again. And that white has disappeared, which tells me it's basically oil and light from the skin. And um has got some got a good print on it. Uh, that's my spot where I like to pitch my tent. And, uh, oh, so before I play that audio here, before you do that. So Dwayne and I were uh, on a recent visit. We'd gone out in my vehicle, we were driving down some back roads, and I had my dash cam running. And at one point, we've had activity happening in the vehicle. So they can show up literally anywhere. I mean, anywhere. And that we're talking, and at one point, I, I hear strange voice. And I don't say anything for a few seconds, and, th and then I ask Dwayne, I said, did you, you know? And, like, I don't have that on here right now, but, so, um, and we end up learning that we had vocalization right there in the car, so he heard our conversation. And I believe it was Nin Yannin, and he's the, the young troublemaker of the family right now. So we were talking about, um, I had mentioned, I hope they don't push a tree down while we're, you know, down one of these back roads. And so I went out by myself a couple weeks after that, I think, went to my tent spot, laying in my tent, and sure enough, I hear a tree go down. I get in my vehicle, go down the road maybe two, three hundred yards, and, and I came across that tree, got pushed down, so I was blocked in. And I'm sure you thought that was really funny. So I have a, I have a piece of audio just to finish this, which is, uh, it might, might be pretty loud, but um, it's one of the tree pushovers that I've recorded at that same spot. So if you want to hit that. three and a half years and then I was told Mike you show. Yep. 
Um, well, I've been, to, been through Alice many times and just uh,
and I saw this, uh, this smoky substance right inches from my eyes. And, and I remember I, I told, and then um, I had my face covered like that. It's very hairy, very soft. And I, and I told Dwayne about the, the smoky substance. I said it, it was darker than dark because we were outside and I could see this smoke-like substance. And then it happened to him. It, it, that incident kind of led me to believe that that and also the, the arm of the snowmobile leads me to believe that they can show their, their body in part or in whole. So they don't have to fully materialize all of them, so, you know, their whole being. They can do it in part. That's why I'm pretty convinced of that. So, as far as his head size, uh, I don't know, it's, it's difficult to say. I haven't really taken any... The, the fence there is five and a half feet tall. So, I don't know. You'd have to... They're online on my videos on uh, Sasquatch. I have a channel for anybody that's not aware. I have a channel called Sasquatch Ontario on YouTube. There's a lot of gold rules in... in you know, supporting evidence posted through out there. So you can take a look, those photos are on there. Everything that you've basically seen today is through that channel. So I have uh, two questions, actually. Uh, the first question being about the orbs that you witnessed, uh, especially the one with where the orbs just covered the whole street. Were those visible to your your eyes, or did they only show up on camera? Yep. Um, basically, only on camera, but I have seen them when the flash goes on. But there has also been a more incident with one that was this, it was just absolutely incredible. It was a, like a red plasma pulsating type orb with a really bright red nucleus, and it, it looked a bit maybe softball size and it would slowly pulsate to look at a four foot diameter and it started dancing and, and Dwayne and I got to watch this. He, he actually witnessed something very similar in the woods with his uh, girlfriend um, where he saw a line of these lights and they, they opened up into a red translucent doorway. That's what it looked like. So there, there's a lot of strange orb activity. We witnessed uh, light orbs indoors as well. But as far as seeing them in, in real time, like with the roadmap, I have, as I mentioned, when the flash lights them up. But so for the most part, those ones like that, they just tend to show up on the camera. Although we've had the ones where, you know, they're fully visible. Uh, my other question is, uh, I've heard many accounts of people being abducted by aliens and seeing various alien species, including the Sasquatch, aboard these craft. And I was just wondering if you have any insight into like, the UFO connection with Sasquatch. Have you seen, for example, the triangles in the sky? I myself have seen over 20 UFOs, all different kinds. And I'm just wondering if those experiences relate to Sasquatch in any way from your experience. I, I'm fully convinced there's a connection. Um, July 2018, I had two UFO incidents 15 days apart. One was, uh, and, and both in incidents were pristine conditions. They made sure they were pristine conditions, so my, my guess is so I couldn't dismiss it. The first one happened right beside Pearson, driving north of 400. It was uh, perfectly, 12.30 in the afternoon, perfectly clear day, not a cloud in the sky. And um, going with the flow of traffic, I'm maybe about five, five lanes, six lanes over from the left, there's probably 10 lanes or I don't know. Um, and suddenly, this, there's a transport just ahead of me in the lanes on my left, and suddenly this uh, large, moving, massive shadow went over top of me, and it was going just faster than the flow of traffic, so I could see it. And I instantly just thought, something's off here. You know, I didn't hear any plane, right? Thinking that it's got to be a plane. I looked at it, there's nothing there. It was a closed ship. 
So then I was up in this area 15 days later, and it was, um, I could see a flight path way off in the distance. See planes passing, see their flash of ice on the problem. Dead still night, I could hear their, their, the roar of their engines, you know, pass afterwards. And at one point, then I see this other one come from basically the same distance, but it was following that flight path, and it was coming towards me. And it was a bright light, and I noticed instantly that there was no flashing lights on it. I stood up from my chair to find myself, and I watched as this thing came closer. It ended up passing over the road, maybe could have been a couple thousand feet in altitude. Um, I couldn't see a craft because it was just a big bright light. Um, dead silent. So, and Dwayne had an incident where this was quite a while back. He had stepped out of, he's a, he's a musician, so he was out with some buddies, and, and they were on their way home. Um, him, and a, him and a friend of his, it was about 3 o'clock in the morning, they pulled into a convenience store. So Dwayne gets out and he sees this guy standing in the parking lot, he's looking up, he looks up, and he said there was a ship right there, so it was so big you could see markings on it, and it blocked out the sky, it was so massive, it was just, you couldn't see anything else, absolutely huge, just hovering there. So he goes into the store, he comes back in, he's telling the guy that he was driving, you know, hey, look, look, and the guy wouldn't even look. He, I, I think that it wasn't meant for him to see. He was in a rush or something, and he doesn't understand why he didn't even look, you know, how hard is it? to just stick your head in and look up. So he witnessed that. Um, and there's other strange phenomena that goes on in the area where where we do this. Uh, him and his father were also witness to basically a flock of thunderbirds, 15 foot wingspan, he said about 15 of them. I think this is probably close to 25, maybe 30 years ago now. And it was the sound of, that they were making that that caused them to look up. They, they flew over the bay, and I think they're coming out of another dimension, you know, because these things apparently don't exist. And then there's a, a second story from another source that come out of the same area of somebody who uh, mentioned about seeing four, like four foot tall babies in a tree. And two completely different stories from people that don't know each other out of the same, same area. So, a lot of strange stuff. Probably uh, well over a thousand encounter incidents now. I barely had a visual. You know, I've been touched on the head so many times. Uh, Pokes. They. I've been told I'm watched by bad humans. I think this. Well, I've been told too. I, this. You know. I think why they don't reveal themselves. I don't know what technology is being. What, you know. Is is built. Is being utilized to seek them out because I've also been told there there is military hunting them. Um, you know there, there are people that, that want them wiped out. They're a threat. They are a threat to the raising human consciousness, right? They wake, wake up human consciousness, and there is a war on human consciousness. So it's, as far as uh, looking into the eyes of them, except like, through Ness picture, no, I, I haven't had a close vision. You know, I I hope so one of these days. Sorry, say it again. Well, um, that's, that's because they've been cropped, so just to zoom in closer, right? There's only so much resolution. Um, the, the two photos, I showed the original shots, and then I took the two and I put them side by side just to show the facial differences and crop them. And, and the more you crop in, 
then you lose quality in the image. Also, Anything can happen with them any time. They seem to like it late, but uh, over the years, when the vocals would happen a lot, uh, four o'clock in the morning seemed to be popular time, and we would stay up pretty much all night. Cedar Swamps? Um, I don't really, but when I go visit, I'm basically, I'm not really searching for them. I just show up and they show up. So I'm not going through swamps and, you know, I, I still hike in the forest and that, but uh, I, don't, I don't go searching for them. Yeah, definitely.
website, sasquatchontario.com and Sasquatch Ontario on YouTube. Yeah. So yeah, we also have our YouTube channel where And that's when I heard dog bark, and she did see something walk there in the dark. 
but she couldn't make it up. And then, and then those guys never came back, and the guys from the cabin. So, um, so I told Charlene, let's go back to your place because, um, I'm, you know, your dog's gonna bark at them all night because they can come around and camp that time and bury there. When you came, when I first met you, yeah, they were coming around and like seeing the trucks all over the place. And then, uh, um, I asked them, let's go to your place because I'm not going to go to her again. And like, you know, when you get that bark. So, um, so we went to her place and I came back the next day. And, um, I have a screen pen, like a big 14 screen pen, quick screen pen, and the box were open, and I'm, I'm like, what is it? You know, something went in my pen, and then, and then I look, and I see my my carvings, like like one over here, and one right here, and one over here, and I'm like, oh my geez, I go, no, I go. So, again, they were giving me the vision of and I spent to go step back and I had my smudge bowl. I had it right here. I had it on the ground because I was using cedar as a budget guy. And when we left, I, I just left everything as what as is. And then I came back and I saw my smudge bowl like split in half. But but before I picked it up, I did see like a big footprint on my smudge bowl. So it must have like because I have this uh, bright light. I put on my tent that way um, anybody comes down or anything comes down, the light will kind of shine and you know that's how I'm most of just walking around my tent. So um, so how I saw it was like that light came on, they snapped it and they were like, oh okay, so they light and they, they looked at my my carvings. As I could see his two feet, his footprints over the picture table like that. And I was like and I was like seeing all this, what he was doing, and I'm like, whoa, well, they looked at my carvings, they picked it up, and, they, and I'm glad they approved because they were put back on the table, so I thrown out. I was like, okay, thank you. But yeah, you, 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 when, when you look at the footprints, um, when you see one, put your hand in it. You're gonna feel the energy. When you, when you feel that energy, like, there, what they touched and where they stepped on, put your hand on the footprint. You're going to feel that vibration. It's very powerful. Like, very powerful. I had Debbie, I taught Debbie how to do that. And she's like, it's, and I asked, did you feel it? She's like, yeah. So it felt like that on the Reiki, the Reiki section. When you do that healing work with your hands, you can work with the vibration because we all have that vibration in it, within us. So that, that there, like, I, I, and then I saw signs and then the broken branch over there and that over there. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that there and that. Plus, I took some pictures. So, like I said, I didn't have time to do the pictures. Um, maybe I'll show them next year because we're going to have this every year. And next year, I want to invite them. Um, And he's like the belt, the Orion, Orion belt. Um, he's, that's him right there, his head and his body. You'll see the other stars. If you look at that, look at what's teaching from the star system. And that's what I'm going to light next year. And hopefully he'll take the set and bring his constellation dome where he does have the teachings in that constellation. So yeah, so if you, if you look at the piece, it's just no chips. It's just in half. So um, it was an accident because he the light the light caught him off guard and then he was like stepped back and then that and, and then stepped into the tent and observed my carving. So that was really nice. I felt honored. I go, okay, I'm not doing too bad then if I'm doing it because of my first carving. So things like that like happens when we go out camping and Wow. 
last Sunday when I went out to be my, my friend and I, Jennifer, and um, we were just enjoying the, the view. And I'm there thinking, yeah, okay, we better get this pipe ceremony going on. And then um, I felt something touch my back. Like really gen like gentle, like can't be described it's not a human touch on me. Like, and in my, I could hear them saying, yeah, yeah, her getting the pipe ceremony going. And they're, yeah, okay, we'll go ahead.
and if you're ever want to go out with me on a hike or something, and, or ceremony, you can do that too. Okay? I just want to let you know I'm open, I work with everyone from all walks of life, all from different cultural backgrounds. I don't only work with First Nations people, I work with everyone. And um, to share that, because it's, it's them that brings the healing to help us. And they connect the people to help them help us. Okay, get your language. I want to thank you all my volunteers that came up here. All the vendors. Thank you very much. I love to have a job over there. <laughs> and um, I want to thank the Native Canadian Center for allowing me to the space. I'm and, um, very nice job. Um, you did help me. And, and, they really love their event and they brought it forward and we just said, they didn't hesitate. We were working on this and yeah, we we'll just have it here. Like, okay. <laughs> so it's really nice. So, um, yeah, and the truth of the situation made today too. So I'm on and 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 on if you can, pick your tobacco down, pick your tobacco in uh, this tobacco out there. And as soon as you say your prayers, give thanks, and thanks to these guys. Okay, so anybody uh, have any questions? Last the minute questions? Oh yeah, we have a Sasquatch. Yeah, this is going to have a Sasquatch calling. <laughs> oh my god, so uh, I got one participant. <laughs> And I want to hear from many of these guys. Don't be shy, okay? They're not going to laugh at you. Okay. Okay. So anybody want to do a Sasquatch calling? Give it a try? Um, Heather, are you going to go? Okay. You want to go last? Okay. Okay, Heather. I wish my brother was here and I should have started a Zoom for this because I love his stuff for the time too. So here's my sister, sir. Hey, Jimmy P. Thank you. 
there. Like, it's not like they're making fun. They, 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 because we have humor too, and we know that. So, they're like, it's all fun, and then for the good day, they, they know what we did here today. Um, each and every one of you said, and for sure, like, in the next year, if you all want to have an experience somehow, that's what they're coming right now. You all are going to have an experience soon. Within the year. Okay, let's, let's have another year. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to go to the next one. Okay, so we're going to Thank you. 
money or get my city money or go for funding, so that's what I did. And now I applied for the tenancy of uh, the indigenous hub in Toronto, so hopefully I'll get a spot and I'll help other artists like me to uh, get your work up there. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Love y'all. Let you go without having that calling contest. Oh yeah, who is the winner for the calling contest? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think all of them were. <laughs>